Hey guys, so I decided to try one of these things finally. You've probably seen these, they've been out for a long time. This is the Scan Gauge 2, and if you've got one of these new modern diesel trucks or Jeeps, this is a really nice little tool to have because it shows you a lot of information that the factory gauge package is not going to show you. So let me just kind of uh, show you what I've done here with this so far. And, and by the way, you can put this little display anywhere you want. They give you six feet of cable with the kit, so you could put it up on the dash if you wanted to, or down in the console somewhere. You know, there's lots of flexibility there. You can mount it wherever you want to. I've temporarily got it here on the steering column just because it was easy to do real quick and uh, easy to see and get to the buttons. Uh, the instructions that come with this are really nice. They have a lot of uh, diagrams and pictures and it can really kind of walks you through everything you need to know to set it up the way that you want. But the reason it's so great for, let's say, your Jeep Wrangler EcoDiesel or the Ram 1500 EcoDiesel or the upcoming Jeep Gladiator EcoDiesel is because, like I said, the factory gauge package is really lacking. You know, they don't give you a lot of the things that you might want to know, particularly what's going on inside your exhaust system. So. For example, what I've got set up right here right now, this is the diesel particulate filter temperature. This is the temperature at the turbo. And I'm gonna to get to here in just a moment why those are helpful. Right here you can see whether or not the diesel engine is doing an active regen cycle, which is something that's nice to know. This is the soot load on the diesel particulate filter. Right now I'm at 63%. So basically it's 63% clogged up is basically what that's telling you. And the truck is programmed to start a regen cycle when the DPF gets to 80% clogged up, basically. At that point, it will start injecting diesel fuel into the exhaust to heat up the exhaust and burn off that soot. And you'll see the regen come on when that happens. And then the number up here, which should be 80 at that point, will start to decrease. So this is really helpful, you know, and, and I've got a lot of other gauges in here too. You can look at turbo boost, you know, how much boost the turbo is providing instantaneously. And there's just all kinds of things you can do with this. But uh, the diesel particulate filter temperature, um, this is obviously directly related to whether or not the truck needs to do a regen because if the temperature's high enough during your normal driving, then it won't have to do a regen, which is awesome. But what I have found, I mean, I'm sitting here right now in the parking lot, so it's only 282 degrees. But what I found is that when I go out and drive, and like right now, I mean, it's first thing in the morning, it's already 75 degrees, you can see. It's going to be in the 90s again today, heat index well over 100 again. We've had some pretty hot weather here lately. And even with the hot weather, I've noticed that if I go out and take a drive on a four-lane highway or a two-lane highway at 55 miles per hour, the diesel particulate temperature never gets above 500 degrees. It's always usually down in the 400s, and that's not hot enough to burn all that soot off. So even when I'm driving around, you can see the soot load increase, and the particulate filter will continue to plug up basically with soot, even as you're driving. And that's kind of interesting to me because I guess I didn't understand how it worked. I was under the impression that as long as you're driving the truck, you're actively cruising down the road and you're driving the truck, that it will naturally burn off some of that soot. But that's not the case. Um, I found that you really have to get the diesel particulate filter temperature up in the, you know, 600s, 700s, 800s. You got to get it way up there, several hundred degrees before it will naturally start to clean the filter. And the only time that I've seen that happen is when I'm out on the interstate at 70 miles per hour or when I'm towing a pretty sizable load. You know, you really have to be working this engine to get it to do that. So that's been kind of interesting. You can kind of monitor, you know, the conditions that, you know, that cause the DPF to burn itself uh, clean and, the, you know, what doesn't. Uh, the turbo temperature is really helpful because on a turbocharged vehicle you don't want to shut the engine off if the turbo is too hot because then you can get oil coking and all those bad things so you know they tell you even in the owner's manual they tell you that you need to let the engine idle for a little while before you shut it down if your turbo is really hot if you've been working the truck hard but it doesn't give you 
excuse me, any specific parameters, this helps you to see exactly what the temperature at the turbo is so you know if it's safe to turn it off or not. This will easily exceed a thousand degrees if you're working the truck. And I noticed yesterday, even driving down the road in the heat uh, with no trailer on, it was in the uh, seven and eight hundreds a lot of the time. Uh, it's very easy to get the turbo super hot. So like I said, this can help you to know, you know, if it's cool enough to shut the truck down or not. Uh, the soot mass load is what this parameter here shows you. Again, the percentage of, uh, of the diesel particulate filter being clogged and, and uh, plugged up. And basically, uh, this is really helpful because you can kind of, you know, as you drive for a while, you can kind of tell, you know, what type of driving might cause you to do more regen cycles and what kind of driving might help you to, to reduce those. So anyway, it's pretty helpful, uh, pretty neat little tool here. And there's lots of different things you can cycle through. Of course, it shows you your typical stuff like your intake air temperature and your voltmeter. You can do fuel economy and you know, this is how many gallons per hour you're consuming and so on and so forth. Uh, lots of different things. But then they have what they call X gauges, which are the specific things you want to see with your vehicle. Uh, like right here, this is boost. And you can see just sitting here in the parking lot with the engine idling, there's not hardly any turbo boost at all. But I've noticed that driving down the road, you know, this Eco Diesel is putting down 20, 22, 23 pounds of boost pressure at times. So that's been kind of neat to watch also. Um, but anyhow, uh, the scan gauge too is pretty cool, real easy to set up. You guys might want to check this out if you're a diesel enthusiast and you're just kind of wondering, uh, you know, how the exhaust system is working. Uh, and how it does what it does and kind of watch it do what it does. This is a pretty neat, uh, pretty neat tool. Uh, one of the other things I wanted to show you, I also have, uh, I can find it here, this is the, uh, the selective catalyst, okay? So this is uh, that big bullet shaped thing in your exhaust that's uh, downstream from the diesel particulate filter. You can also monitor the temperature going into it. And when it goes into a regen cycle, and uh, or excuse me not a regen but when you start injecting that diesel exhaust fluid uh, to clean this thing out uh, you can kind of watch the temperatures go up and down you can kind of see what's going on with it so anyhow again just a really cool little tool here uh, i'm going to try and find a better spot maybe to mount it so it's not in the way because it's kind of blocking my uh, odometer and uh and things down there but not a real big deal anyhow scan gauge too you can pick these up online from lots of different vendors easy to set up and and, uh, and use and uh, it's a pretty nice little tool if you've got a diesel so you can kind of learn more about how your truck works or your Jeep works and what's going on with it. So just wanted to give you guys a little view of that this morning. I'm gonna head on down the road to work now but I will be back later on. Thanks for watching.